go to Ram storylines. Uh, let's get let's start off with with Lions and as <clears throat> as Don, you know, kind of started there with the defense. My question is to you: you know, you you follow the the NFL uh, as a whole. Will the new upgrades on the defense take this team to the next level? For the Lions, right? Or the Lions. And yeah. I can give you the names. DJ Reader, Marcus Davenport, Carlton Davis, the third, Terry and Arnold, Amik Robinson. Uh, and as you know, and then you have some other guys, uh, McNeil, you have Sam Houston on that defensive line. I mean, they've upgraded. I think my biggest, my biggest uh question mark on that defense is the linebackers. Uh, I, I want to see if they if they make that jump, you know, in season two, but uh it's it's your floor. Sorry, Gilbert. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll, I'll 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 start with the easy part, the things I don't like, but I, I'm not too, I'm not, I, I'm okay with the linebackers. We'll see, like you mentioned, if Jack Campbell makes a jump there. They have some other playmakers there, and Zaloni has been there for a long time, but he's a little older. So, but the ones that I am, the areas I'm concerned with, like they, like they did have upgrades on the defensive front, but you could have used another, like a like another, like a better. I'm not saying like a prime edge rusher you got you have Aiden Hutchinson you don't need to have two Aiden Hutchinsons but like something a little better than Davenport it just feels a little off I, I know that uh Don mentioned Houston there he had an up and down season last year maybe he I think he was a rookie correct me if I was wrong Don but two years ago he was surprised he didn't really do much last year so edge rushers I still have a little concern but you have a stud in Aiden Hutchinson I, I had some concerns about Hutchinson after a rookie year I was like it was okay but it wasn't the best then he just took off in year two that guy is dominant uh and then they also the lack of depth at wide receiver. Like, you know, I'm on Ronson Brown. He needs some help out there. Like, Jameson Williams was supposed to be that guy, J-Mo, and he hasn't really done much. Maybe this is a year, but after a while, you keep waiting for that for that jump, and they never get there. I'm starting to worry he might Everybody's not make that Everybody's picking to have a breakout season. I, I mean, I, I'm not according to reports, I mean, he's been catching everything. I'm just giving you the information yeah, that I've been I, hearing. I shake my head because that's the same nonsense we get in the preseason. It's the best. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm like, until I see this guy do something, like not, yeah. he's gonna have one catch for 40 yards in one game and then disappear for four games. Like, I just, you gotta be consistent, man. Like, you can't be suspended. Suspended. You can't be hurt. Things like that. Uh, whatever. We'll see it. But I'm gonna be one of the naysayers here. But I, I have seen the reports too as well, Victor. But but that doesn't concern me because not to the good stuff. You have Sam Laporta. You have a two-headed monster in the backfield with Dave Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. You, you know, you know. You also have a very uh, dynamic offensive line to make life easier. Penesu, like I even wrote last year, like it's getting to a point where, like the Lions might have more talent than the 49ers. Yeah, that the 49ers have more star power, but look at the offensive line. It's probably better than the 49ers. Yes, they have Trent Williams, but you don't have. It is better. I can tell you that outside okay, of Trent so I'm Williams, not, so, not I, I'm there. with you. Yes. So there's more, there's more depth there. Uh, obviously, you you probably have more weapons, but when you have Sam Laporta, who might maybe maybe surpass Travis Kelsey as the best tight end, I'm not ready to go there. Travis Kelsey is still the best uh, decorated tight end in terms of playoffs and Super Bowls, but he's taking a step off when it comes to regular seasons. That could be Laporta to help out. Uh, but then you got Jared Goff, who's, who's, who's doing great. I, who knows, maybe Jerry? I think Jerry Goff is better than Brock Purdy. I mean, I don't know if it's a hot take, whatever. Uh, and then you got the a good play caller and Ben Johnson. O overall. Uh, to not go all day, they might have the best roster in the NFL. You know, maybe like maybe you put in the, the Chiefs there, but when you have Patrick Mahomes, that's a sizable advantage overall over everybody. Just Patrick Mahomes and everybody else there, uh, but they're, they're that good. And it's starting to annoy me, Victor, because it seems like everybody either has the Lions winning the Super Bowl yeah. or having them in the Super Bowl. They, everybody likes the Lions, so Don, I don't know how you feel about that, but they are that damn good because of the upgrades they made, especially at, at a weak point. Like in that playoff game, Pukunakua lit up the Lions secondary. Nine yeah. catches, 181 yards, and a touchdown. A rookie went off on them, and you know what they did? They traded for Carlton Davis the third. They drafted Terry and Arno, who was a, who probably the steal of the draft. Uh, Ennis Rakestraw Jr., who was first round potential, you got him in the second round. Uh, you got the guy from the, the Raiders, uh, yeah, uh, Robertson. Robertson, and then that, that allowed them to move uh, Branch to to safety, which is more of his natural position. So. Uh, Melifano, he's, he's injured right now, but you were just loaded with dynamic playmakers in the second there. So on paper, if Jared Goff keeps doing what Jared Goff has been doing, I think it's gone to the point now where we should trust the guy. Uh, they're going to be very good. Yeah, and I'm I'm with you. And I think part of the reason I'm one of those people who picked the Lions to make it to the Super Bowl. And 
honestly, I just the way I look at things is as you talked about, you you mentioned the talent that's there, and I know a lot of people are gonna crap on um Jared Goff, but Jared Goff has been good. And then I think for me also, Gilbert, is it's crazy. This this franchise has been a doorman. This, I mean, you couldn't even get the Lions on on primetime games, and now they're the darlings of the NFL. And it tells you how quickly things can change if you hire the right people when they, you know, and you you hired a former Ram in Brad Holmes. You go and you hire Dan Campbell. They got laughed at for hiring a CEO at head coach who was just a meathead that everybody thought. They got lucky with Ben Johnson. They fired, you know, a compa as an, you know, as the offensive coordinator and they hired Ben Johnson who was doing tight ends. They let him run the offense and look at what things happens when you actually do things the right way. You let people develop and you give them time to insert players and staff into your, into, in, into your program. And it's been great to see that. That's why, and, and they've been the lions. I know this is a Ram show, but the Lions have been one of our our teams on Combas on the Beach just because of of, of the storyline, right? Like they they they've been that team. Eventually, you know, as they say, the glass slippers is gonna fall, and then everybody's gonna turn on them. And, and we've seen this. It, 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 so right now, just enjoy the ride, just because the Lions have suffered for so long. You know, as we talked about, the the biggest thing that they had going for them is that they always hosted. The, the Thanksgiving game, which was awesome to see for them. That was, you know, their Super Bowl every year, it seemed like. And now you're talking about this team being a Super Bowl contender, and that's great to see. But as we say, as we talked about, I think for me, part of the reason that I have them in the Super Bowl is because look at their schedule. And I, I talked about it, you know, on Compass on the Beat. They're going to be indoors or in a dome for, you know, uh, 75% of their games this season, Gilbert. The only time they go and play outside, I think after Halloween, uh, or no, after week nine, is a, a trip to Chicago, you know, and that's it. They they play the they play the Packers uh, in Green Bay early in the season. So I think for this Lions team, you know, it can they meet expectations? And as Tyler Dragon said, are they prepared to have you know, everybody gunning for them. And I think that's where the question mark, I think if you have a question mark is, are they prepared to have the bullseye on, on their chest this season? Yeah. And, the, you know, I think the NFC is very good, but there's less like legit contenders in the NFC. Like obviously you got the, you got the 49ers uh, hovering there, but you know, in, in the AFC, man, like uh, if, if you, like, uh, I, that's why I kind of went on a limb. Like, you know what? The, I think the Texans could come out of it, but you still got the, you, you never know what the Jets could do. But I think if the Jets are healthy, it could be a contender. Uh, I am not going to r- write off the Bills just because they lost to Fon Diggs. Uh, obviously, you got the Bengals, you got the Chiefs. And uh, like, it's starting to look like, honestly, like, if you look at the AFC, it's still the Chiefs there. So I think the Chiefs and the Lions are kind of a trendy Super Bowl uh, prediction right there. But, uh, the Lions don't have the wear and tear of the Chiefs. They, you know, they proved to us last year they know how to meet expectations. Like that's where I was a little hesitant, hesitant on the Lions because I was even critical. I was like, why are you drafting Jameer Gibbs with your top ten pick there? It's a running back, and now Jameer Gibbs. I, I love that player. He's a, he's an amazing player to watch. I had him on my fantasy team last year. He paid off uh, in the back end of the stretch there. But you know, now it's getting to the point. Where, like whatever the Lions do, I don't care about the trend. I don't care about what's normal. I don't care about uh, what works and what hasn't. I'm going to trust the Lions because they they have a reputation now of getting things right. Brad Holmes, the GM, he's getting it right with the picks. Dan Campbell, like you, like you mentioned with the hiring of Ben Johnson, he's getting it right. He has a post on his roster and is reading it right. So they're becoming this team. Like when whatever the Chiefs do, whatever the Patriots used to do back in the day now, it feels like a long time ago, you just trust what they did. It didn't make sense maybe in the outside, but you're going to trust it because of the reputation. And that's what the Lions have done. And it's such a quick span there. So last year they, when they they had they had two years ago they had that hot run with the one seven out of eight games. I'm like I gotta see it first. Well, I saw it last year. I'm definitely believing in them, and so did everybody else apparently because of all the picks coming in for Super Bowl for them. 
Yeah, and I mean, it, they're a trendy pick for a reason, as we talked about. But like I said, it eventually is going to turn. And as someone just said here on the comments, it says, it's crazy. Uh, Nigel Ward says, it's crazy. Lion fans learn how to talk crap pretty fast. And one of the things I've seen, Gilbert, is I think I didn't know this, just, you know, you know, coming from the outside, but they really don't like you know, Kelly Stafford. And I think that's where their vitriol for the Staffords comes from is just the way things were, you know, I guess the way she acted towards Lions fans, they it left a sour taste in their mouth. So I, I understand. I don't think it's a Rams thing. It's more of a Stafford thing, which I, I kind of understand. And I was listening just to kind of get some insight into the Lions heading into this week. And they're still talking about Kelly Stafford. So it tells you that, you know, like they were asked about uh, the two of the players that, that were made available, uh, Deckard, and I forget who the other one was. Uh, they were asked about, you know, the environment there and, and, and the whole Stafford stuff. And, you know, they brought up the whole fact that, you know, they didn't, the Lions didn't do anything for Stafford last year. And why would you? It was a playoff game. You yeah. might get something this year, but at the end of the day, I mean, the, the, the Rams got a Super Bowl with Matthew Stafford. And I think, the Lions are in such a great situation right now. Why are you worrying about what, you know, Matthew Stafford and his wife are doing and the fact that they're coming back? The reason you you are in the position that you are is because you traded Matthew Stafford, and that should be your only worry right now. Yeah, that's another example of why the Lions are getting it right. When people made fun of them for keeping Jared Goff and trading Matthew Stafford, uh, and then they did this with Jared Goff, that, that tells you a lot there, but... Yeah, it's uh, maybe becoming a little rivalry here. Maybe they play each other in the playoffs, and I'm, I'm totally with you on not doing anything for Stafford because it was a playoff game. It's a competitive game, you know. Yeah. Uh, even like yesterday, people making a big deal about Shohei Atani uh, not getting a special thing for the Angels. I'm like, why? Shohei right. and the Angels didn't do anything. Like They, they lost right. a lot of games. Who cares? Move on. You blew it, Angels. Uh, don't, don't, get, don't get reminded of you blowing it by giving them a special ceremony. So uh, I get it, but... Uh, yeah, things like that. It's it's becoming a rivalry, and that's a good thing. Sometimes these rivalries are not in the division, are a little fun because they're unique. It's like the Bengals and the Chiefs. It's kind of been a couple of years now. But things like that that materialize away away from the division as a surprise, sometimes it's pretty good for football. Yeah, and I like the whole Hollywood versus, you know, blue collar. Like, I, you know, I'll eat the, all that stuff up. Like, I don't get... You know, you know, it, it doesn't affect me, but I, I think it's pretty cool. Like you talked about, you need to manufacture some of these rivalries. And I like this. We're all pumped for this uh, Sunday night game. So that's part of it. All right, Gilbert, moving on here. Uh, another storyline just quickly is the Lions and Rams will both start rookie kickers. You you, you have Bates with the Lions and, and you have Cardi with the with the Rams. I mean, I guess at this point, you know, you're you're just hoping that you don't need either guy there. But I think both of them are in good situations. You had uh, Bates who kind of kicked for the UFL team in, in Michigan there. And so he's familiar with four field, and that's why he kind of signed there. And then you got Joshua Cardi, a, a rookie out of Stanford for the Rams. And that's the way to go right now. If you look around the league, you've had a couple of teams kind of take chances on on rookie kickers, uh, you don't really you you hope you don't need them, but at the end of the day, if you can, if, if with Josh Cardi, I think it just comes down: can you hit your field goals inside the forty, you know, inside the fifty, and that's all you really want. Yeah, it's always tough to rely on on inexperienced kickers because it, there's this trend with kickers where like. Uh, you know, they get so nervous early on because they don't really, you know, do this for a living. Or I guess they do do it for a living. But, like, it's a different kind of pressure when everybody is all eyes on you and you're not this, you know, big, strong, power, powerful football player. You're, you're the kicker and, like, you you haven't done anything for the whole game. Now you're coming in to win a game. That's a lot of pressure. So a lot of these young kickers, you know, uh, don't do well. They get cut a couple of times. And then by their second and third stint, they're like these all-pro kickers. So uh, it happened with Daniel Carlson. happened with Cameron Dicker of the Chargers. Like, it just... Uh, a young way, uh, coup, uh, yeah, coup, not there. Yes, I got it. Uh, you know, all the time it happens, so you know, I think maybe patience is going to be tough for the Rams, but like Joshua Cardi, he made his kicks in the preseason, so that's a good sign. Preseason and the regular season is totally different. Uh, when there's a game on the line, there's pressure that could be where you really find out if you have something here with Joshua Cardi, but we'll see. Uh, and then with the, with the Lions, you know, we saw what happened with Brandon Aubrey. 
you know, he was bouncing around to some minor league football leagues or whatever you want to call them, other pro yeah, football former leagues. Soccer players, and former soccer players, exact same story. Yes. And he and he he did he did well. So uh, and somebody drafted Brandon Arbery in our league, our fantasy football yes. league, in the eighth seventh round, seventh round, the seventh round. So whatever. So uh, he's doing great. So. Uh, credit to the Lions for taking a chance on somebody from that route there, but uh, you never know. These kickers who are inexperienced, uh, it's tough to deal with sometimes. Yeah, and kickers, I mean, you can say there's like a top 15 now in kickers now out there. Like you, you, it used to be like Benetieri, you know, Tucker. Now you can just rattle off, you know, that's why if you're talking about fantasy, you just wait or you just stream a kicker nowadays because there's so many good ones out there now. There's kickers that are hitting. We saw Audrey against the Raiders. He kicked a 66-yard field goal oh, yeah. in preseason. I mean, it, it, it's crazy now. Like, some of these kickers are making the 60-yard field goals look automatic. So that's how good some of these kickers have become. And a lot of them are going after former soccer players. And that's why you see, you know, guys like Bates and Aubrey out there, you know, getting on NFL rosters. But uh, now let's move on to the to the Rams here. and. I'll I'll mention this comment first from our guy, a what is it, Al G fella. I am baffled with the recent moves that the Rams have made, i.e., Kyron, the switching on the O line, inside mm -hmm. linebackers may make something more like a politician, but the strain mm -hmm. on his facial strain. So with that said, that goes to our next two storylines for the for the Rams here, Gilbert, and that is how will this defense look under new DC? Chris Shula, and you kind of talked about it. We 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 kind of went over it over this, but I just as you talked about what Adam Grossman said, we don't know. And I think part of the problem, Gilbert, with this is the fact that we didn't get to see Jared Burst. We didn't get to see Brighton Brighton mm -hmm. Fist. We thought we did see Omar Spates out there. We saw guys like that. That's why we're we don't know what to expect from this defense. And so I think that's part of you know, the problem is that we're talking about preseason. We didn't see, you know, you ask reporters, hey, you know, what what, what is your sense from training camp? Nobody knows because they haven't seen any of this, Gilbert. Yeah, that, that's why I'm excited that the regular season is here. We could stop speculating and we're going to see what happens. But, like, yeah, we anybody could look good in the summer and, and do well. And we could boast about the first round pick and the second round pick you traded for. Yeah, they better look good because you, you traded for them or – Whatever, you spent the high draft pick on them. But, like, at the end of the day, they're still rookies. At the end of the day, you're still going to have to play without Aaron Donald. Like, that that safety net is not going to be there. Uh, can Kobe Turner take that step to become the leader of the defensive front, like the Aaron Donald? We're not expecting him to be Aaron Donald, but you better be a, a Pro Bowl caliber player to make sure the defensive front is going to be good. Maybe an all-pro. We'll see. That'd be better for the Rams. But uh, it's all of these unknowns. And you have a new uh, DC and Chris Shula. Maybe he's trying new things. New things that you've never done before with this defensive front that's so young, first year, second year. So that to me, we're going to find out very quickly because I'm tired of talking about it and saying, okay, well, they have a first round pick here and a second round pick. Well, they got to play first. We got to see how can they play. And we're going to find out on Sunday night. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I've heard, like I said, from either, you know, uh, Kirk Morrison and the Marco Far is that they've said that with, with Chris Shula's defense, he's going to be more aggressive. It's going to be, it's going to look a little different. So, I'm with you. I can't wait to see how they're going to look against this Lions offense, this porn Lions offense. And I think, you know, we'll both talk about it when we get to our keys to the game. But, yeah, it, and then the next one, Gilbert, just moving on to the offensive line and, and, and what, what you know, um, uh, Al G. Fella had to say is how concerning is the shuffling on the offensive line? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll start off with this, and then I'll let you respond to it, is, you know, you have – Steve Avila, move, you're moving him. You you had him be the center for most of training camp and the preseason, and now you're going to move Jonah Jackson. Now, I'm wondering if this is just Sean McVay playing head games with the Lions, or is this for real, like this is what's going to happen, and is is the injury a lot worse than we're being told? I just – there's a lot of question marks with this, and I'm, I am I can understand the frustration from – uh Al G fella there because I mean, what are you doing with your offensive line right now at this point when you're you know you, week one as you're getting ready to start the season, Gilbert? Honestly, I'm losing track. Can you can you refresh my memory of what the heck the week one lineup might look like for something? Like so that? 
from what we've been told for this week from from the B reporters is that it sounds like Jonah Jackson is going to start at at center. You're going to have uh, um, uh, Steve Avila left guard and Kevin Dotson, and then Joe Noboom at left tackle, okay. and then uh, Rob Hammerstein at right tackle. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It, it, it's weird because you did, you know, try Steve Avila for so long at center, and now like you know what? Never mind. I, I I think Jonah Jackson. I don't know if he had much experience playing center, but I remember when they signed him, they're like, hey, you know what? If it came down to it, he said he's okay playing center, so maybe they always had that in their back pocket. But it doesn't make sense to me there. And and yeah, Avila was a great left guard, but you you had something in mind. And I get when you have Larry Jackson, you know, missing two games is not ideal. But like when he comes back, are you going to go back to your original lineup? It's just also just too much shuffling. So. Uh, I don't get it. Maybe they feel like I would like a help out in open who might be a little bit of a weakness point at left tackle when you're playing Aiden Hutchinson. You know, maybe from that standpoint, I get it. But like Jonah Jackson was also a pretty damn good guard. So I don't under I don't understand the thinking at all. Yeah. And I mean, that's what we were told that the reason, you know, they didn't go after Coleman Shelton or resign him was because, you know, they wanted to have Steve Avila be the center, which made sense. That's what the position he played at TCU. And then Jonah Jackson also plays center at college. So I understand that. But, you know, and I, I, you know, when we asked Adam about it, Adam Grosbart, he said, well, they're just doing cross training. And we even saw, we even heard that Bo Limmer was getting, you know, snaps at center, which I was like, okay, maybe Jonah Jackson isn't going to be ready. But now it just, it, it just, it's just weird. Like, you know, I don't know if it has to do with the environment there because Jonah ja Jackson, if they're doing this because Alaric Jackson's going to be out for the first two games, does that mean that jo Jonah Jackson goes back to left guard? I mean, it just sounds like a mess to me. I, but I trust Sean McVay. I mean, it's hard. Like the guy, the guy, you know, it, it's just, you know, and, and one of the things that, you know, kind of frustrates Ram fans and I've been seeing it everywhere is, like we need, we want to know more, but at the same time, I get why he's secretive, and he doesn't want to give out his his you know his secrets out there. So I I, I get it. I guess that's why I'm with you. I I can't wait till Sunday night because we're gonna find out what the real story is. Yeah, it, it's tough to understand right now, but you know I I, I do get that. Joe, Joe Nopen could be a liability. He, he did not really do much with the job opportunity to be the left tackle the last couple of years, and uh, he lost the job to to Jackson there. So they're, 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 they just, they're seeing something there. I don't know. Maybe it was just for the week because you are facing Aiden Hutchinson there, but uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me.